Well, I'm joined by Geeta Sangal, a women's advocate and formerly a worker for Amnesty International, a campaigner on gender issues. This question about the use of rape as a weapon and the possibility that Viagra is being given to pro-Gaddafi forces, if this were to be proved, Geeta, just explain how significant this development would be. Well, of course, Ocampo is still investigating, and we don't know. Uh, you know, it hasn't been proved yet. But the issue is, uh, that has long been established is that rape is used as a weapon of war, and it is about power and not sexual excitement. Um, but if it were proved that um, uh, Gaddafi's forces have formally been given Viagra and, and been given either f implicit or explicit orders, uh, to go out and rape in order to terrorize the population, it would mean that Gaddafi himself was implicated. Either he himself or his commanders are implicated uh, in committing war crimes. And of course, this question that this is something that's premeditated, it didn't just happen, it was something that was put forward, planned, and almost used as a military operation. Yes. I mean, rape is a crime. In, um, in whatever circumstances it's committed. So whether it's an individual soldier committing it on its own or whether it's an order. But if, it's, if it is an order uh, of uh, Gaddafi's forces, then, um, as I said, they are directly implicated and not just the individuals who commit the act. Um, it shows there's a chain of command that's m making this happen uh, as a means of prosecuting the war. And that is illegal under every norm of human rights law or the laws of war. Now, of course, rape has been used in wars throughout the decades, but uh, the fact that the ICC is looking at this so intensely, so closely now, how much of a development do you think this is? Well, it's interesting that it's happening now while the conflict is still on and while these allegations are still emerging, because quite often it doesn't get investigated until much later, uh, sometimes because people are afraid to speak out. But, but as we know, in Libya, women have been speaking out. And, um, and, you know, many in the population have supported them. Uh, so that's important, uh, that, that this issue is coming out. But um, what we're concerned about, and I, I've just been talking to uh, women working uh, in networks of, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 con um, in conflict situations, and they have struggled long and hard to ensure that rape is recognized as a weapon of war. But what they're concerned about, that often when investigations take place, they don't lead to prosecutions. And sometimes they don't lead to prosecutions because the rape charge is dropped in plea bargaining situations when the prosecution and the um, defense sit down and talk. Uh, and this apparently, you know, this has been happening in the, IC, in the tribunal on Rwanda, in the Rwanda cases. And we fear it's happened in many other cases as well. You know, the, the, the studies of, the, of what goes on in court or what happens before the cases come to court is being examined. So it's not, still not being taken seriously enough at the level of prosecution. Okay, Gita Sagal, we have to leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you.